Hey Cyclones fans, welcome to Cyclones TV, your one stop for all things Brooklyn Cyclones. I'm Dave Van Gorder. And I'm Sarah Kinkart. The Cyclones finished up a six game road trip tonight in Connecticut, have tomorrow off, but return home here to MCU Park Wednesday, July 16th for another six games at home. But kids don't miss out, this week the Cyclones are hosting baseball camp, so come out, meet your favorite players, and learn a thing or two. And of course, Sunday is Superhero Night, so don't forget to break out your favorite superhero costume and meet us here at MCU Park. But let's take a look at how the team did last week. Last week, our Cyclones went 3-5 and five on the week, but had good starts from Corey Oswalt, Marcus Molina, and Scarlin Reyes. Currently, the team has an even record of 15-15, and 15, which gives them third place in the McNamara division behind Hudson Valley. Nine of the next 12 games are at home where they have a winning record, so hopefully playing here at MCU Park will bring them a little more luck. And now let's check in with Dave to see who our Player of the Week is. Our Player of the Week is first baseman and outfielder Michael Katz. The right-handed slugger hit 310 on the week with two doubles, three runs scored, and three ribbies. On the season, he leads the team with 14 runs. He's also second on the team with 30 hits, 14 ribbies, and a 286 batting average. Congratulations to our player of the week, Michael Katz. And now it's time for our top plays of the week at number three, Michael Bernal with a mighty swing and it's just rolling, rolling, rolling on the foul line. Ump says fair. And our number two play, Marcus Molina deals it, Abreu launches it down to second base, forget about it. And our top play of the week, a chopper hit to third, and Johan Urena says gloves? Ah, those things are overrated. Fires a laser over to Jeff Deal, call it a Urain maker to nail the runner by about a hair. Congrats to Johan Urena on our top play of the week. It's time to send it to Sarah, who's with former New York Met, Edgardo Alfonso. Okay, fans, I am sitting here with Edgardo Alfonso, Fonzi, and we asked you guys to post questions to ask him. And the first one is from Frank. What is your greatest moment of your baseball career so far? Um, my greatest moment was my uh, first at bat in the big leagues. <laughs> that was uh, one of them. Uh, I think the biggest one uh, it was, um, you know, my uh, my first uh, my first at bat, or oh, my first grand slam in the playoff against Arizona, and of course the the Subway Series. I think it was one of those great moments of my career. What was going through your head during that moment? Well, uh, not much. I just uh, kind of like, um, you know, nervous in the beginning. But uh, after that, uh, great, great relief for myself and, uh, and um, nothing much going through my, through my uh, mind. Okay. okay. The next question is from Anne. What player sticks out to you on this team as having the most potential? Well, it's hard to say because uh, you see a lot of prospects here. So uh, I think... Uh, um, you know, I don't want to pick two or three guys. I will say uh, we have a bunch of guys, pitchers and stuff. Uh, it's tremendous. Uh, uh, the infielder, they're, they're pretty good. I think you know. I think every everybody here have a chance to to play in the in the in the major league level. Uh, you know, the longer they they keep doing the same the way they are doing right now, they work hard and and uh, you know the potential is there. Um, you know, but uh, we'll see what happens. Now you've made your way up through the farm system. You played in the minor leagues and made it to the majors. What personal advice can you give some of these players? Well, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, like I talk, try to talk to them every day. They learn the the, the faster they learn the game, the better it's going to be for them. So it, it's not. It, it doesn't matter how much talent that you have, but if you don't know how to use it in the field, it's gonna it's gonna stuck. Uh, it's going to make yourself stuck in, in in one level. So you know, besides the talent they have, they have to learn how to uh, game situation. This I think this was the count. To uh, to move her step by step and 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 gonna get to the big league, you have to know those uh, you know those rules, uh, and then I try to tell them every day, you know, when, you know, don't try to make the same mistake, be consistent, uh, and one way or the other because they were they, they were so hard, they they were hard and and and. and I know because I'm, I'm with them, but sometimes you know mentally, mentally um, a mistake is kind of like a little hard for, for to correct. They have to do them themselves, you know. Okay. So it's all part of the growing process. Yes, yes it is. It is. <laughs> okay. And our third question is from Lisa, and she wants to know how much do you notice the noise as a factor here in Brooklyn with the roller coasters, the fans? Do you see it a factor? No, I think I think it's great. I, I always tell the guy, hey, you know, when you when you when you play against a big crowd, you know, when when you see um, 
uh, people come to watch the game, the roller coaster, I think it's motivation, motivation <laughs> as a player, you know, to try to do better, to try to do good because you want to show the people you can play the game. And, and they also they're going to help you to, to move to the next level because if you're thinking about playing the big league, you, you're going to face like, what, 50,000 people on the stand? So it's kind of, you know, preparation to get to the next level. I think it's great to, uh, to the, the support by the fans here in, in Brooklyn and, uh, you know, to, to have the, this beautiful facility to play the game. And your brother used to manage here, Edgar. What was his reaction when you told him you'd be hanging out in Brooklyn for a little bit? No, he was he was happy. He was happy. I wish he can he can be here with us, but um, you know you know how it is. And and uh, he told me you know there's a great place to go around here, but you know I live here in Bayside, so I don't I don't do a Brooklyn much. Um, but he was so happy, and and he told me you know make sure you say hi to the guys over there. <laughs> and then uh, he he was it was it was great. And you played in the near Penn League yourself, so fans want to know how have you seen it change over the years. Has B seen a change? Or? Well, um, I tell you what, this this is majorly compared with what what I was in Pittsfield, and I think the competition is getting better and better because, um, you know, you got more opportunity to prepare yourself, to um, to get to 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 get yourself to the point. Then then this great competition. I don't say back then it wasn't because I went the Baden champion by then, <laughs> but. Um, but I think it's, it, it, the facility is getting better, and, and people, uh, the players, motivation, uh, they motivate more to to play hard, and then and then you know I think this is paradise compared with Pittsfield. Nothing against Pittsfield, but this is, is a great place to play. All right, that was a former New York Met. Let's take a look at a current New York Met and a former Brooklyn Cyclone, Dylan G. The right-hander pitched for the Cyclones back in 2007, going 3-1 with a 2-4-7 ERA in 14 games. He also made two rehab starts in Brooklyn this year, going eight and two-thirds innings pitched and striking out 16 batters. He's currently 4-1 with a 2-5-6 ERA over nine starts this season with the Mets, and he has 37 wins in his five-year Major League career. And that's Where Are They Now with Dylan G. And now, fans, let's take a look around the Mets organization. Down in Savannah, the Sand Nets went 2-4 and four last week and have a 60-30 and 30 record on the season. Their 11-game winning streak was halted, but they still have the best record in the South Atlantic League. Down in the Florida State League, the St. Lucie Mets went 1-4 and four on the week, pushing their record to 53-36, and 36, which is good for second place in the Southern Division. The team is excited to announce that they will be hosting the league's 2015 All-Star Game. Up in Binghamton, the Mets went 6-1 last week and currently have a 57-38 and record on the season. They are looking to extend their winning streak to three games tonight when they play Erie. The Las Vegas 51s went 3-4 on the week. Their record is now 56-42. and They are still in first place in the Pacific Coast League Pacific Southern Division. Former Dave Van Gorder profile picture Alan Dykstra was named to the Pacific Coast League All-Star team and will compete in the Home Run Derby tonight in Durham. That's all we have for Around the Organization. We'll check back with these teams next week. And that's all we have time for this week, Cyclone fans. But make sure to come out to the ballpark and give us a visit as we have a busy week coming up. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at BK Cyclones. For Cyclones TV, I'm Dave Van Gorder. And I'm Sarah Kinkart. See you later, Brooklyn.